What do you do if you find out that your partner has been watching an excessive amount of porn and maybe it is impacting all kinds of areas of their life and of your life? Maybe they have said they're gonna get help but they won't get help and you're just kind of trying to fight this battle and it's not working. What do you do? Or have you just found out something and you're trying to figure out how to get them to get help or how to get through this and you don't know where to start. You probably started looking at YouTube videos just to try to find something that could help and that's what got you here. So I wanna talk through what you can do to help somebody who's struggling with porn and how you can help. Uh, I did a video last week about signs that someone is addicted to porn. So this is kind of the the next step in that. So if you watched that and found that that was true, then this is kind of the, the next step that says, okay, now I know that there's a problem. What can I do about it? How do I help? What is fair to, to ask of this person? What is not fair? All of that kind of stuff. So um, let's talk through that a little bit. So one of the things that I think is really important is to educate yourself. So get clear on what a porn addiction is, what that looks like, how big of an impact that is. Um, just kind of understand it for yourself because if you're trying to help somebody and you don't really understand what they're struggling with, then sometimes it can end up being even more messy than it needs to be. And this isn't an easy situation regardless. So get kind of an understanding of what this looks like and what's going on and kind of how big of a deal this is for them. So. If you really have found that they kind of meet the criteria for an addiction, then this is probably a pretty big deal. It's not, it's not just something that they can get over quickly and easily. It's going to take some work. Um, so understanding that, and if it's early in the relationship, this is really taxing. If it's late in the relationship, it's really taxing too, right? So some people come to me and are trying to decide, like, is this... A big enough deal that I should leave this person I don't want to leave this person but you know I want to just be really clear and evaluate what's going on so this is something that you kind of need to understand for yourself so educate yourself outside of talking to them and try to talk to them and work through it obviously and get an understanding of what their this problem really looks like for them so I think both things are really important understanding what an addiction is, how it impacts them, kind of from an outside perspective and from them directly. And some people will be really open about, this is what's going on for me, this is what I'm struggling with, and some people won't. So that may take more effort to understand them if they're not kind of ready to go there yet or they struggle with expressing themselves. Sometimes going to a therapist and having them kind of guide you through that process and help you as a couple is helpful as well. So that could be something that you could try out. Uh, if it's early in the process and they're still struggling to understand what's going on, maybe you find some really solid resources or some videos that you think would help them, you can share that with them. That's a kind of a nice step sometimes I think. Like, And a, a good way to approach it is like, hey, I found this cool Instagram account or I found this good video and I thought maybe you would like it as well or maybe you could relate to it, like check it out. So that's a really kind of casual way of doing it and it's a low pressure way of doing it. It's not like, hey, you need to watch this now, you need to do this now, you have to do this. It's more of like a loving, hey, here's a resource check it out, it might be helpful for you. So they're probably gonna be a lot more receptive to that than if you're really demanding or really forceful with that. Um, so offer them resources, offer them help, try to you know, offer support as much as you can. Some people, like I said, are more receptive to that. Some people would be open to going to counseling. Some people would be open to talking to somebody. Some people are gonna be a little bit less inclined to do that. Um, but that doesn't mean that they don't need help, right? So at that point, I think it's important to get clear on your boundaries and your expectations because it isn't fair if they're not addressing this or they won't get help or they won't take action to take care of this. It's not fair for them to keep dragging you through this if they're not gonna try. And so that's where you have to decide, okay, if they don't do this or if they don't make some effort in getting better, then this is what's gonna happen. This is where my boundary is. 
And that's not, that's not to be unkind or anything. That is healthy for you to do for you, for them, for your family, really, if this is impacting your family as well. They need to understand how big of a deal this is. And you want them to get help and be healthy for themselves and for their relationship and for their lives and your lives together, right? So really be clear on what your expectations are. And if it comes to that, then you may have to communicate pretty clearly, like, hey, you're not addressing this, this isn't okay, this is still impacting us in all these ways, I need you to do this. I need you to find someone to talk to, or I need you to talk to this person, or I need you to try this program. And if you're not willing to try something, then you know maybe we're gonna have to take a break, or I'm gonna have to step back, or whatever your expectation is, just be sure that you, that you will uphold it. So don't make empty threats. Spend some time clearly defining what your expectation is and your boundary is, and then clearly communicate that and then make sure that you're willing to uphold that when that time comes. Uh, so that's something that's really helpful is to get clear on that for yourself. Uh, the other piece I think is, is really helpful in this is that you need to get your own help and your own support. Even if you are going to counseling together and you're working through this, it's likely that this has seriously impacted you and maybe in a really, really serious way. So some people find that they really are going through PTSD symptoms. So they're going through post-traumatic stress syndrome symptoms from finding some of this out or, or hearing how bad this is or knowing that their partner has been keeping a secret from them for this long and it can really kind of tear you apart. So the impact of that on you can be severe and serious and you need to get your own help for that. And even if it's not at the level of serious trauma or you don't have major, major consequences, like maybe you have developed some anxiety or some depression from it, or maybe you have trouble sleeping or you have really negative feelings about yourself. Even if it's not that bad, you still can benefit from your own support in going through this because you're probably trying to support them and and be there for them and try to take care of everything else and deal with your own emotions so getting your own support is really helpful and i really think them getting their own support and you getting your own support and then getting support for you as a couple is the most ideal situation that you can have so that's that's always what i try to help couples do in working through all of this. And in taking care of that and getting your own support, you have to take care of yourself. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're meeting your own needs. Maybe that's a kind of social group or a support group or making some yoga time, some quiet time, some meditation time, some just sleeping time, some time where you can just go in the room and just be alone for a little while you really need to make sure you're taking care of yourself through this because it's really taxing. And even if it's little things and little rituals and little kind of ways to rejuvenate yourself, like making a cup of tea that you really like, maybe in a mug that you really like, and really taking some time to just be in the moment and enjoy that. That's something small, but it can have a big impact. So you have to find things like that that can help you take care of yourself because this isn't easy. It's not a quick process. There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs. It's gonna be really, really taxing on you. So the more things you can find to sort of ground yourself and find some calm within yourself, the better you will be at handling this for you and them and everyone involved. So that's the last suggestion I have is to really, really take care of yourself and make that a priority.